presentation short today by using these picture pictures. And this is the first one to show you how they work. And the key of them is basically is 20 slides each for 20 seconds. So 6 minutes and 40 seconds in total. And it moves whether I want it to move or not. <laughs> in total time. And so, yeah, we're, we're really pleased to see together such a lovely gathering of people, people from PLCs, from founder managed companies, from family owned companies, from employee owned companies, from community interest companies, charities, local and national government organisations. All different people, all able to learn from each other, common factors. This is the day, as you see it mapped out. We start with a world cafe, two parallel theme conversations after that, reflections and lunch. After lunch, a short Aikido session, followed by two more theme conversations, a fishbowl reflection, we'll explain later, ending with a look at uh, the visual minutes before a glass or two of whatever you like. So, we'll start with World Cafe. About five people at a table talk for a few minutes about a key question, and then all bar one scatter to different tables and continue. Please make lots of notes on the paper cloths and on the minutes outside. They will be the minutes. We may invite people to move a couple of times per question, and there are typically two questions. Key themes of the day, as you can see, what is engaging leadership? Ben Wilmot's going to talk about. Is HR helping or hindering engagement? Neil Morrison's going to talk about. Uh, engaging the employee with the customer experience, Peter Peart's going to talk about. And from underclass to real class, winning back trust, uh, Neil Jervis is going to talk about. So. <clears throat> Already identified as having the lowest engagement in Europe, Connexa's most recent report shows the UK actually got worse, despite four in five PLC directors calling it their major concern in 2011. That's after their bonuses. <laughs> actually, <coughs> engagement is not the real problem. We are all born loving to engage. It's actually disengagement that is the real problem. Employers must stop disengaging their people. That's what we want to talk about today. So, <clears throat> disengagement is fundamentally unnatural. It makes you physically, mentally, and spiritually ill, and it shortens your life. And this isn't conjecture, I mean, this is fact. This is frightening. It also makes you less profitable for your employer. So, the question that we have to ask what actually disengages? Verticality is the first thing. Our Western model of society is fundamentally vertical. President, boss, the CEO sit at the top. Eastern society was more horizontal and inclusive, but is changing. The sudden rise of the Shanghai skyline is reflected by the decline in Chinese engagement, down to lowest in the world, equal only with the UK. Inequality disengages. David Cameron suggested that the highest paid publicly paid managers should not get more than 20 times the lowest paid. In Finland, few firms exceed three to one. The UK income gap is growing faster than any other developed country, although the USA is still extreme. Unfairness disengages. We're born with a sense of fairness as a, as a species and sharing as a, commercial, as a communal species. We need to be, fairness is so important. Groups who cooperate well thrive. Unfortunately, we've short-sightedly misled ourselves into our present state. Bonuses <laughs> Fundamentally, let me, to bribe an employee to do their job shows contempt for them. It's not quite the same as sharing financial value generated, which should be proportionally shared. And there are other ways of doing that than simple bonuses. Lack of recognition disengages. I thought this little picture of. Uh, I think it's David Cameron and uh, George Osborne, and, and is, that, is that Ed Balls over there on the far right? <laughs> Not sure, but it's... Lack of self-awareness really doesn't help. Most managers, and there's another survey, most managers believe that their staff respect them, <clears throat> but most staff think their managers lack necessary skills. <clears throat> Dunning calls this blissful incompetence, and notes and it's a real problem. The less competent you are, the less you know it. <clears throat> we ourselves, everybody in this room and beyond this room as a society, we cause the worst failures of engagement by disengaging as remote shareholders via pension, insurance and savings funds. That enabled PLC directors to hijack our rights and our obligations. 
know there are better ways to run a society. Structure helps. Employee-owned firms enjoy the highest employee and customer engagement. We all know about John Lewis, but there are well over 100 others in the UK. Clark Shoes is an interesting example. Family and employees together since 1825. Personal, spontaneous, sincere and frequent recognition and appreciation engage. <clears throat> so a recent survey found that almost half of employees had not been recognised in the last six months or longer. Gallup found that recognition needed to be at least weekly. That's every seven days. Every seven days. Again. The most engaged state of all is flow. Flow occurs when you strive for a clear goal you value at the very edge of your ability. Your sense of self disappears to reappear later, stronger and with a sense of mastery. We need more flow moments at work. We desperately do. Dutch surgeons found that surgical teams who spent 20 seconds in silence together before operating made about 25% fewer mistakes. So I'm finishing with my next slide with 20 seconds of complete silence for you to enjoy the shortest night last week in Finland. Thank you. Thank you, John.